This week we are testing the water from the Atlantic Ocean to see if the parameters are what they should be. Welcome back fellow reefers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Sean and this is where we take reefing one day at a time. Have you ever wondered how the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean compare parameter wise? We have and we have done a little experiment. This is just for fun and to see how close or accurate our test kits are. We are only using hobby grade test kits and not the top of the line equipment that scientists use in labs. So there may be some inaccuracies. My youngest daughter traveled to Safe Harbor, New Jersey and was able to collect a sample of water there. Atlantic Ocean from the beach. My oldest daughter's Air Force unit traveled to Hawaii and was able to secure a sample of Pacific Ocean water from there. This week we'll be focusing on the Atlantic side only. Next week we will be going through the results of the Pacific Ocean. For this experiment, we decided we would test phosphates, nitrates, ammonia, calcium, KH, magnesium, and salinity. After testing each parameter, we will compare the results to what oceanographers have found the ocean waters to be. As you can see, we have the water sample from New Jersey that my daughter brought home. It's time to test the alkalinity. Through research, we found that the average KH in the ocean is between 6.36 and 6.78. Using the HANA alkalinity checker test kit we got, we got a result of 116 parts per million. Take your calculator and multiply 116 times 0 0.056, the result is 6.49, which falls right in the middle of the average DKH. DKH and calcium go hand in hand. One result will affect the other. Oceanographers have reported the average calcium level would be 412.1. For this test, we'll be using the Red Sea Calcium Test Kit. As you can see, we have 22 milliliters of reagent remaining in the syringe. After the color change, and according to the chart provided by Red Sea, the calcium in the sample we tested is 390, which is roughly 20 parts per million lower. Salinity is crucial in any system. The question we found ourselves asking was if the majority of the fish in our very own aquariums that are harvested from the ocean, how accurate are our tanks from where they were coming from? We use the HANA salinity checker for this test. As you can see, the salinity was 1.023 at a water temperature of 70 degrees, which is the ambient temperature in this room where the water has been sitting. It's lower than the 1.025 ocean average. Magnesium is the one parameter that we can never seem to get below 1500 parts per million in our aquarium, which is due to the old salt we were using that contains high magnesium. We made the switch to Fritz, and now it's going to be a while before it comes down. But this test will verify if it is in fact the old salt or a bad test kit. For this test, we will be using the Salifert Magnesium Test Kit. Concentrations of magnesium are typically higher in the Atlantic Ocean since it is saltier. Our magnesium result came back with 24 milliliters of reagent left in a syringe for a total of 1140, which falls well below the average of 1283. It's pretty amazing the things we have to dose in our reef tanks that occurs naturally in the ocean. One thing we add our phosphates when we feed our fish. We'll be using our new HANA phosphate ultra low range test kit that we just bought being our old one no longer worked. Phosphates essentially act as a fertilizer. However, if phosphates don't get consumed, it can cause an algae outbreak to overtake waters and create dead zones. According to the oceanographers, the average phosphate level occurring in the ocean is 0.07. Now that the results are in, let's see what we got. For our test, we ended up with 0.15 parts per million, which is slightly higher than the average. 
when we add a few fish to our reef tanks, an ammonia spike, even a small one, is expected. So as vast as the ocean is, there are plenty of fish in massive numbers. So what's the typical amount of ammonia in the ocean? 0 0.02 is what you can expect in the ocean. For us, keeping reef tanks, keeping a close eye on ammonia is critical, as if it gets too high, it's so harmful to not only your fish, but invertebrates as well. We will be using another Salifer test kit here. The color chart is not broken up into categories that low, so we will see what we end up getting. As you can see, on the color chart, we are not quite zero, but less than 0.15. Unfortunately, that is as accurate as we can get with a hobby grade test kit. The last test kit we have to complete is a nitrate test, the final stage of the nitrogen cycle. Without this cycle, there would be nothing to consume the ammonia produced. Nitrates can be a very controversial topic. Some say you need to keep ultra low nutrients, and others say you need to have higher nutrients as to prevent your corals from starving. From what we could find during research, the normal amount of nitrates found in the ocean are 0.05 for shallow areas and nitrates of 2.5 in deeper depths. The deeper the ocean depth, the higher the nitrates found. After conducting our tests, we had to use the lower results section of the chart to get a result, which is looking from the side and dividing the amount shown by 10. In our case, doing so gave us a result of 0.10 for nitrates, which falls right in the range that oceanographers studies show. Leave in the comments what your parameter predictions are for next week's video, the Pacific Ocean off of Hawaii. In conclusion, we feel like this was a very fun and successful test. And in the process, we learned a lot from this experiment. Obviously, we reefers do not have the equipment to test like marine biologists do, but we feel our test kits we use and depend on for the success of our systems hold their own and give us close enough results to keep our reef tanks where they need to be. So, until then, we'll see you on the next one.